so this is going to be a fun interview because it's sort of about Rackspace, but it's not about Rackspace. But who are you? So I'm Brett Pyatt. I'm on our corporate development team, uh, working with our partners in the cloud, trying to make the cloud easier for everybody out in the world to use. Um, I guess it doesn't do us any good to build a magic technology widget if people don't understand how to make use of it. Yeah. And so tell me what your life is like. You're going around the world and meeting with partners or they're coming here and or, you know, what are you seeing? What's going on? Because you're you're in the center of a, a major company and a major trend that's just happening, right? Yeah, so I, I guess I'm seeing a lot of people trying to reinvent the wheel on the cloud. Um, it's one thing where I, I think we're going to see a lot of startups that have some early mover advantage here. Um, building technologies and tools in a new way, and I think we're going to make a lot of our old systems management tools better because of this. So, um, like for the last 20 years, all of the stuff that you use to manage, it's been the big company software, the BMC, the HP stuff, the IBM stuff is how you managed all of your systems. And now with this new cloud, we have a new way to deploy systems, But and there's all these new companies coming in with new tools and ways to manage them, and I think we're going to see uh, because of that. Because most people who don't manage data centers or don't, don't manage, the, give me a sense of what kinds of things you're talking about when you say manage. So today if you set up and build a server, um, you have to set up some monitoring tools for that, let's say. Okay. Setting up those monitoring tools are pretty complicated. You need to have advanced technical skills to be able to set that stuff up to use maybe HP's OpenView tool or something like that. Now it's getting so simple where we have partners that are building stuff that integrates into the API of the cloud, so all you have to do to set up monitoring on your server is know how to go to a web page. And, and give them copy and paste your API key off of your site so that they can access and get in and, and work with the servers inside of your account. Very cool. So, I mean, it's making it so that people don't have to have technology as a barrier anymore to the decision. If they want to figure out how to reach their users somewhere, they can find some way to do it that's as easy as filling out a web form. Okay, and give me a sense of the customers that you're, or the partners that you're working with and what, what are they building onto the cloud and what does that do? So. If I'm using the Rackspace Cloud, where would I see their products, uh, their yeah. fingerprints, I guess? So, um, we are working with a, a number of people that are sort of out there in the industry that are focused on making it easy for you to use clouds, but then there's a, a second piece to that where we're also focusing on tools that uh, make it easier for you to build a website, whether it's on a cloud or not. Um, and we happen to be integrating them into the cloud a little bit tighter, so like I said, with that web form, you can spin stuff up. Um, we're announcing at the end of this month, so this is sort of off the record right now, mm -hmm. a Rackspace Cloud Solutions Portal. And on that Solutions Portal, we'll have uh, featured partners in there that we've done technology testing and integration with. You'll be able to see how their product works, how it, it ties into the Rackspace Cloud. And then we'll also have sort of community projects where we go out and have people at Rackspace looking for somebody writing something out in the community, an open source project that might work with the cloud, and we'll feature that there so that we can drive traffic through to that, hopefully get more people participating in these projects, and um, from that, we drive the adoption of the cloud overall, because the more tools we have, the easier it is to use it, the more people you, are going to start adopting it. Can you give me a sense of two or three tools that you're, you're going to feature? Uh, you know, that, that you're really, tell me the ones you're really passionate about. I'm really excited about, um, like for anyone that's done, say, front end web design stuff for a long time, a lot of the analytics packages, you either have Google Analytics, which is really simple, pretty easy, everybody can drop some JavaScript on their website, or a lot of, as soon as you kind of move up from there in the analytics world, it starts to get really complicated to implement. So there's some startups uh, that are building on the cloud and using our technology that makes some of that stuff easier. Uh, Mixpanel's an example of one of those that we'll be featuring as a partner. Um, where they've sort of redone the analytics world in a way that's easier to deploy and easier to use for a web designer. Oh, very cool. As you go around the industry, what, what else is happening? Because you're right in the middle of this new cloud thing that's getting a lot of hype and people are adopting it, you know, especially the newer companies, you know, like we were just talking about Y Combinator. Tell me what you're seeing. What you know? So, you travel I mean, it, the the real game changer is a pretty simple example I use a lot of times is look at the amount of venture capital Facebook took on. So they're at 700 some odd million now. And they only started about five or six years ago, somewhere back there. And now if you look at Twitter, where they really started ramping up their traffic only a year or two ago, they're getting some of the benefits of this cloud technology. They only had to take on 50 million in funding to build a huge platform. I mean, that's the kind of things we're seeing. And then like Y Combinator startups where uh, they can invest 25,000 in a company and you can have a product that gets up and off the ground and online for $25,000 now. So the 
barriers to entry on a, a lot of these technology uh, advancements is going way down. Uh, not like the first round of the sort of dot bomb explosion is you had to put so much into each of these guesses. It was, I mean, a million dollars to get off the ground to do anything. Yeah. Um, and now it's a dollar to get off the ground to do something. I mean, you can run a server for three or four days for a dollar. People already have a, a PC. You can go down and get one from a second hand store for $10 and that thing's perfectly good enough to, to build a business on top of. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. What, what other trends are you seeing you know, in terms of Twitter or friend feed or Facebook? Or? So uh, I really like, one of my things that I really love is understanding the needs of the customer out there on the internet um, and just in general and figuring out how to solve those problems for them. I think uh, Twitter is a really good way for companies to get sort of candid feedback from their customers. And that's one of the most important things to a company is to get your customers to really tell, tell you what they feel, what they're experiencing, whether it was good or bad. And a lot of times customers are afraid to give you that direct negative feedback yeah. because they know they might still be your customer, but they feel safer in something like Twitter where they might make a, a comment there under an account that's not as official as talking to you on the phone or <laughs> sitting down face to face with you. So. I really like that, and then also people like will go on there, and I, I think we're going to see this with real-time search um, and some of these things. That they're going to ask questions and problems, and you're going to have a community sort of crowdsourced answer on that. So being a, a product development company and working on tools and technologies, if we see a bunch of people asking out there, how do I do X, how do I solve this problem, we can take all that feedback and build something out of that to help them. So. Yeah. Back to the cloud, uh, if you're a business and you're looking at you know, Amazon, Rackspace, or, uh, or the other cloud, uh, Microsoft and Google are out there with different cloud solutions, how do you decide between these? Um, I think it depends on your business. So Amazon's built a really cool technology cloud and platform. If you're building your application in the way that they feel you should build their application. So they've designed their cloud in the way that they run their, their business, their Amazon.com store. So they've designed a distributed application. Now it means it sort of scales horizontally across a bunch of servers. And they've expected that at some point during that, that server's life it's going to fail and the application still needs to run. There's almost all of the businesses out there on the internet now don't expect servers to fail. They, if they've got their app, it's running on their server. If that server goes down, their app's down until it comes back up. So uh, until we have application frameworks that abstract that di um, distribution layer out, like Google's App Engine or our uh, cloud sites or some of the stuff Microsoft's doing with Azure, until we make that easy for programmers, it's really going to require a lot of learning for a programmer to redo an application to expect those node failures and distributed um, aspects of the platform. So. Right. Um, Amazon, if you're building for that, it's a, probably a better cloud than ours. Uh, we are building our cloud to... Why do you say that? Can, can it, is it better thought out just for cloud or...? It, it's better thought out for horizontally scalable distributed applications because, I mean, that's Amazon's website. And, I mean, if you were going to build a search engine cloud and Google offered a search engine cloud and you could buy cloud search engine, like platform, uh, Google's search engine platform is going to be better than something I'm going to build to be a search engine platform. Right. Yeah, so I mean, th they've taken what they've learned from 10 years of running, uh, it might store. be the largest e-commerce website. I don't know how that ranks with eBay, how you count the two of those back and forth, but one of the largest e-commerce e sites, and they've taken everything they've learned about internet architecture on that and published it out into a web services platform now. So um, we have a different view, I guess, coming from Rackspace in the being the 800 pound gorilla in the small to medium business hosting space and with that we have customers that have a dedicated server they expect that server to be online every day all the time and 100% uptime SLA that we and if not then we write service credits like we did in our last earnings report so yeah. um, with that we're trying to take that same mindset over into the cloud so that people don't have to relearn it's already enough I think of a leap of faith right now to get them to go from dedicated hardware to the cloud, and we have this kind of joke of server huggers. It's really hard for a lot of people to give up that server that's sitting somewhere at their office right now in a cabinet or in a closet in the back corner or whatever. It's safe there. I can touch it. I can feel it. I can keep it online. And to, to go to hosting and to get them to go straight from that closet to the cloud, I mean, that's still the biggest market for hosting companies is that server in the closet. It's not even other hosting companies or other stuff that's already out there in a, an internet cloud environment. It's, yeah, yeah people doing it 
uh, the, the way they've been doing it for 15 or 20 years with the DSL line or lease line or whatever they have in their house. Yeah, I've heard from, Rocky and I have been getting around the world and meeting with a lot of startups, a lot of whom are on, on Rackspace, and they keep telling me, you know, we're, we're still not an all cloud world. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a lot of my work on the cloud because it's cheaper or it's more, e it's easier to program or all the, those reasons, but I still need my own rack that I have my own control of, you know, that I can run my stuff on in the way I want to and I have control of that. And, and they see an advantage of having uh, us host both, dedicated, host, you know, dedicated servers as well as our own cloud because we're on the same Yep, backbone really. Yeah, so there's there's, there's advantages. Low latency, you know, from throwing data. If you want to throw data from your server over to the cloud server and back again, it's low latency, right? Yeah, there's there's huge advantages to that because um, the cloud is more cost effective and efficient if you have a variable workload um, or you're not really sure how long the environment's going to be around. Say you're a, a design studio startup and you maybe throw out a new idea every three to six months and you see, does this one stick, does it not stick? If you're going to spin up a, a dedicated server for three months, it's not very cost effective. But if you bring up a cloud server for a few months, that's great. And if all of a sudden the traffic takes off on that idea, you can add more in the cloud really quickly, whereas in the dedicated environment, that's harder. But if you have a, a known baseline workload, let's say that I do uh, video editing and processing, and every day I upload 100 terabytes of video and I want to process 100 terabytes of video every day, I'm better off doing that in a dedicated environment because then I can optimize the hardware for that workload. So uh, there's benefits to both. Um, where people start to see a lot of benefit in the cloud is if they have traffic variance over the day where that sort of the peak to trough is more than 2x different. So if I've got during my daytime, I have my traffic at a four, and at night my traffic drops down to a one. Well, is if you're across a 10 server configuration, you might be able to go from 10 servers during the day to three servers at night to serve that same application and save yourself money and optimize your environment to serve that. Um, you may want those three servers in a dedicated environment, and during the day you spin up seven servers in the cloud to serve that daytime workload. Interesting. So what else do I need to know about about your job, and who do you want to come here and meet with? You know, what, what kinds of companies are are you looking to partner with and build more stuff into the cloud? So I, I want to meet with everyone that's like working on making the internet easier to use the it's the cloud managed hosting the whole thing. So. Um, if you can accelerate application development. I mean, that's the whole, the way we get more productive as a nation and as a world is not having to do things in the same drawn out long process that we did last time. Do the process once, go back, look at it, and try to make it shorter. I mean, that's why we've gone from languages like assembly or punch cards, if we keep going way back, up to assembly language, to better languages now, to things where... Um, Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails now, yeah, where you can spit out great websites in a week. Um, where it, this 10 years ago it would have taken a team of 40 people a month to build the same site. Yep. So yeah, I mean, it's, that's the kind of companies I want to talk about is that how can you make it easier, faster to accomplish tasks so that we can get more done. Very cool. And are you on Twitter or can we find you anywhere? Yeah, so I'm on Twitter. Um, it's B-P-I-A-T-T. -T. Um, always interested in talking with folks about technology, about uh, trying to use the Rackspace Cloud if you've got questions or problems with it. Um, want to figure out how to solve a problem on it, happy to have those discussions, uh, do this stuff all day, I love it, it's a blast. So Very cool. Well, thanks for uh, spending thanks. some time with me. Absolutely.